Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. Ma makes a big difference. Yes. Um, that like the, the representations that you can learn in this world, I mean, like might not always match with the ones that like we have. Yes. And it is actually an interesting challenge be because it al also means that like even if we are able to develop these machines, it might never feel that we have quite gained the AI because even though these machines work perfectly and they do exactly what we want, we don't quite understand why mm. they behave the way they do. So. And that's why this explanation capacity, it has actually been, it must be even I came to this field in the 80s, but it had been a point of discussion even the, with the rule-based systems that how do the systems explain their actions and choices Absolutely, yeah. and with neural <coughs> networks and multi-layer neural networks and so on so that's even more a question yeah. but then the question is also that we don't know each other's kind of uh, yeah. systems and we don't know even our own kind right. of processes so the cognitive processes are definitely such that we can't say why we chose to do like this and not that yes because it's this kind of uh, which I think like results to human to human conflicts oftentimes that you just don't understand the other person's intentions well yes enough, so. yes and that's why we need to be quite humble absolutely uh, I would say that that's why it's one part of my project so to say is to promote that humble kind of uh, approach and uh, way of considering others and this kind of forgiving so to say yes. and uh, well, I would say even gratefulness so that because uh, human capacity to achieve many things is based on our collaboration so right. kind of uh, building on the collaboration has been the kind of basis for human uh, success so we should kind of always aim at towards that right. but then the question is that if we think about the questions regarding uh, war and peace, peace and war. So, uh, how would you say about the question that is the? Uh, it's of course may go outside of your normal kind of or everyday kind of area, but anyway, I would like to ask the question that what what you talk about or what would you mention or comment on on how to devise these kind of ways to push or guide us towards more peaceful kind of situation because my uh, approach has been to kind of uh, point out three main areas mm -hmm. like methodology related the uh, common understanding or and this meaning negotiation not to construct a kind of common ground because that's how I see impossible to certain extent we, we, ex, uh, kind of way but then we have to take into account emotions and understand our fears and so on and then these systems could kind of model and give us good uh, advice on those who in a large scale for millions and millions of people but then the third area is that how do we organize our democracies or our societies economies and so on but uh, was it so have you read the peace machine book uh, I do have it, and actually I have started. Unfortunately, I haven't like finished the book yet. So yes, but it's a lot of content. Y yes. So, uh, what is your current kind of uh, situation regarding that? So, if you uh, put together these questions and your own right. experience in the field of machine learning and other things like this, so are there something kind of what what would your your take? into this field so uh, absolutely and I, I think actually it is surprising how um, how relevant these questions are so one might think that like it is extremely far-fetched and, 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 and the, the machine learning has nothing to do with the, with the things that you mentioned on the other hand like I, I think that there starts to be a very acute understanding that mm. given the, the powerful tool that we have in our hands I mean with the powerful tool comes a great responsibility yes and, and like oftentimes I mean at the end of the day these tools are being applied to in a human context I mean, it's not only in, in astronomy and in physics where maybe it doesn't, well, I mean, it matters in other ways, but I mean, the, the thing is that, like, I, I think, I think that, the, like, we really have to, like, face these questions, like, uh, like very explicitly, and I, I remember, for instance, at the, at the latest um, NIPS conference, I mean, there was a keynote talk about, about bias. Neural information processing exactly. system, which is the largest, yeah, or most important, main, 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 main machine learning and right. so on. So, and there, there was the kind of a keynote talk about the, the very, like, inherent, like, a bias 
uh, like human bias that we can have in these models if, yes. if we don't if we are not humble enough and if yes. we don't understand these processes enough and then also i mean like what you what you mentioned about these other uh, societal things i mean also the, the question that like if you if you just apply these methods without the necessary like moral compass mm. uh, you can you can actually like um you can you can like end up like uh, enforcing some some like less desirable uh, features in, in the society so so I, I think it is it is extremely extremely relevant and like it is actually not that far fetched on at all and I, I think even 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 like larger companies who do feel their like a societal responsibility are starting to realize that they have to do something about it yes and, and like have to have to understand these things better and of course as an extension I mean like if we do it well if we are humble enough I mean we can definitely start applying them to, to kind of like, uh, like uh, to surface some of the things that you mentioned. So. Yes, somehow the capacities we have at hand also give a chance to do something in a better way. And uh, to me it has been really kind of long-term uh, kind of uh, enthusiasm regarding emergence. Mm -hmm. So that the, because so many of these questions are philosophically really out uh, they to say very deep right. and they have been discussing uh, discussed for thousands of years regarding what is the world is ontology about uh, what what do we have around us and then epistemology how do we model it how do we make it conceptually or linguistically yeah. kind of understandable and communicatable and so on but then the question regarding emergence in these matters especially in epistemology has been such that the old philosophers couldn't really have a uh, possibility to, to study emergence because right. the computational modeling is actually the only uh, really functional way to kind of uh, deal with uh, emergence right. and that's why I think we are living now a new time not only from the practical point of view but really from the deep philosophical point of view. It is and, and I, I guess this goes back to maybe our earlier discussion about the, the scientific method Yes, and and also that of course it, it requires that we we change our like ways of, of, of uh, researching these topics as well, as you pointed out. I mean, it's the only way to figure this out uh, is, is, is is through simulations. Um, at the, on the one hand, it opens up possibilities, and in, in some other ways, uh, it, it maybe makes makes it hard to kind of explain explain like and, and like produce and like explanation and descriptive models in, in the way we are used to. So. So, I mean, it is, it is in a way, I mean, like a double-edged sword, so, so to speak. So. Yes, so we are living in a very increasingly, I would say, complex world. Yeah. So we have many kinds of opportunities, but maybe it's frightening from the point of view that many people feel that they are being kind of uh, taken even further away from understanding the world in such a way that they would be able to somehow uh, control their faith and to have a chance right. to and I, yeah and I, I think um, an interesting challenge to the point of emergence is that like nowadays it is so easy to build machines that we don't understand mm. and uh, and it, it is actually an interesting problem that like maybe this is actually a new era in, in, in engineering in the sense that uh, that like in the old days we were able to build cathedrals and then bridges that were somewhat like very tangible and understandable at least for the practitioners of the field Whereas nowadays, I mean, like if, if you look at uh, like an average mid-sized tech company, they can easily build systems that no single person in the company understands. Of course, yes. And uh, and like, and, and in a way, I mean, it opens up possibilities. I mean, oftentimes these systems are very capable. But I mean, like you pointed out, on the one hand, it, it like uh, it, it increases our level of uh, like uh, uncomfortability that we don't know what's going on. And on the other hand, like also like limits our ability to make actual like incremental progress. Mm. Since I mean, like if everything is, is just emergent and like we it's more like alchemy rather yes. than like really <laughs> really science. So I think and like actually like one of the things that I've been really focusing on over the past couple of years is to think that like how can we take these extremely powerful tools and make them such that like instead of like building something that we have no clue how it works, we can take this almost like a baby step, small incre more incremental steps. And like start like kind of and building the parts of the process exactly and, and and really the big motivation there is that like and it's not only about like having a, a single person but how can we make it so that like a good number of people also i mean like maybe in the best case everybody could understand mm. what's going on and also i mean like just making sure that people know that i mean there's it's not rocket science i mean honestly i feel that rocket science is <laughs> interesting that many of the things we are doing but i mean 
it, it, it's actually like no magic it's no magic so I mean it's just like layers and layers of things that then like result to something amazing yes but I, I think it, it will be especially at the societal level extremely beneficial like as we can like uh, increase the baseline so to speak that more and more people can like understand like more and more what's going on and then like we can kind of build on the on the shoulders of existing developments and like finally I mean start like really solving those problems that seem unsolvable today so. And that's the kind of line of reasoning, something why I feel that at schools it would be important uh, even more than before to study science, uh, the philosophy of science and sci uh, philosophy in general. So because the kind of what is there, how we reason about things and so on, that's the kind of important starting point yeah. and what we can understand about things and how do these new ways of building our understanding how they work and how they can be used and what can be deduced and what can't be deduced